In this video, we'll be looking at how those in power have an agenda to sell off state entities and privatize them by defunding them, making sure things don't work and once people get angry, then they hand them over to private capital. Now this will ensure that even if we vote the ruling party out of power, they will still have control and power over some parts of the economy through ownership of these cash cows. Now at the heart of this conspiracy is Pravin Jamnandas Godan. Now on this episode, the focus will be on SAA because the sale of the national carrier is the template of how the rest of the SOEs will be disposed. Now they're not just selling these companies, they're stealing them by de-evaluating these entities and selling them for cheap. But not to just anybody, they handpick who gets to buy them and the transactions are kept secret from the public. For the viewer who's now possibly listening with an even more keen ear here, I want to go to the article, just one of the articles that have been written in the city press around this suspension and there's a section there around the sale of SAA because this is where this case seems to be uh, anchored on. There's a portion where it says in the paper, Mr. Tlagudi alleged that the transaction had been a template of how the rest of the SOEs would be disposed of to the detriment of the South African citizens who are the ultimate shareholders and the shareholders of these assets. Takuti said what was unfolding was how renowned political analyst Noam Chomsky had first characterized the privatization technique and that is, I quote, defund, make sure things don't work, people get angry and then you hand it over to private capital. Now, South African Airways ex-chairperson Dudumi and his mixture of negligence, incompetence, corrupt intent management and greed left SAA dismantled and ineffective. Now, the report from the Zondo Commission implicated Dudu and her gang of comrades from former president Jacob Zuma, former board member Yakekwinana, former ministers Melusi Kikawa and Lynn Brown, advocate Nonsasa Mamela and many others including external service providers NetBank and Standard Bank. Now the report detailed the fraud and corruption which led to the ultimate collapse of SAA. How could you have approved a contract you did not know? Chair, I didn't think that this is a contract. I thought we were approving only the terms and conditions not the whole contract. The whole contract would have the whole lot of Ms. Queen Nana. the price and everything. Ms. Ms. Queen Nana. And then the terms of conditions. Ms. Queen Nana, you are a chartered accountant. You are a chartered accountant. Now, in 2019, under the leadership of Pravin Kodan, the national carrier was put under business rescue. Now, the business rescue process enabled restructuring of SAA, reducing its cost base, and its financial liabilities and creating a sustainable bottom line going into the future. What eventually happened was that a decision by the government to stop assisting SAA financially was taken and they were going to sell off the majority stake of SAA to a private company. Now, some government officials, including Godan and some in the board of SAA, put together a plan to look for potential buyers. Now, eventually, five companies were identified as potentials. While the process was going on, Pravin allegedly approached Gideon Novich, who is associated with Lyft Airlines, to put together a team and also partner with Herith so they could buy SAA with the assistance of the minister Godan, of course. Now that's when Dagato came about. Now this company Dagato won the bid to buy SAA before they were even registered as a company. Now it was announced publicly before they could even sign any paperwork. Basically Dagato skipped the queue and there was no proper vetting process done to see if they meet any of the requirements. So your allegation, mm. and I'm just doing this in the interest yeah. of time to mm. speed it up, you are alleging that Minister Praveen Gordhan uh, then approached Harith, was it? 
Yeah. And you say that the consortium Takatso did not exist at that time. But essentially, you're accusing the Minister of Interference in Correct. this regard. So yeah. please explain that to us. Well, uh, the, you know, the other partner is, uh, or in Takatso was uh, Hida Novik. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, he's now associated with, uh, I think, his left. With the left. Uh, uh, um, and he wrote um, uh, an article on this end of 2021, uh, no, no, it's probably last year, in 2022, where he actually confirmed this. Um, he said that um, uh, the minister, minister approached him to basically to partner with Harith uh, to, to rescue SAA. And in essence, that's, that's what happened. Um, uh, this end, they meshed. Um, I, I still remember that during um, uh, COVID times, uh, I was at home. And I was bombarded with calls, um, uh, both from the minister and from Hidden Novik, um, saying this, uh, these people must be considered. I was saying, how do you explain it? How will we explain in it to South Africans that, um, that we have this, and this people have just emerged in this particular process? I said, it cannot be. I still have text message to myself and, and, and Hidden, where I was actually explaining this to say, look, I. I can't be party to, to this particular place. And lo, be, lo and behold, these people were brought in, the minister went, went on with the process, of course. Um, and this explains then why we were a year after the announcement still waiting for due diligence. Now, one of the requirements was that the company that buys the majority stake of SAA must have at least 3 billion rands cash in hand available. Now, besides not having the cash, Dakato was still chosen. You know, SAA was undervalued to make sure that Dakato gets to buy it for cheap without having to put up any money up front. Now, instead, they were only asked to pay 51 rands as if SAA was in deep financial debt. Now, according to reports, SAA was debt-free at the time, with assets that amounted to maybe a little bit more than 15 billion rands, and only had 1.5 billion rands worth of legacy debt. <laughs> to be honest with you, they practically gave these guys this company for free. One of the reasons why SAA was undervalued is because they did the evaluation of the company during 2020 when there was COVID-19 lockdown. You see, at the time, the airline was not working at all. So obviously, when they do the evaluation, the company is going to be worth less since there was no money coming in. But if they had done the evaluation before or after the lockdown, the evaluation would have been different. Amongst the allegations, Chakudi charged that the deal was undervalued by between 7 and 15 billion rand an allegation Kodan dismissed. Kodan says the national carrier needed a strategic equity partner that could provide 3 billion rand operating cash or it faced liquidation. He explained that the value valuation of SAA was done during COVID-19 pandemic, which would differ if one were to value the national carrier now. But MPs wanted to know how government reached the 3 billion price tag when the entire valuation process was not complete. We were not satisfied with the responses in terms of the amounts, uh, the 3 billion and 51 rands, 51 rands and 3 billion, and what's the, the actual value. And we, we, we discussed this matter to a point where uh, the committee felt that we need to renegotiate then if these valuation processes are still work in progress, how was this amount of the value of 3 billion rents then determined? Because it means the whole thing is incomplete. Then how did we arrive at 3 billion rents? Kodan, however, stuck to his guns, saying this was the best deal. Is this the best deal? The still deal is the best that we know of. Now, a complete lack of transparency by Pravin Godan on the selection process of a private shareholder for SAA has been his preferred strategy ever since this process began. 
Now, the question on the 3 billion rents guarantee that Dagazo is supposed to provide has not been properly answered. In fact, Dagazo is saying that they never agreed to a 3 billion rents guarantee for this deal. Now, Pravin has refused to provide two crucial documents on the sale of SAA to Parliament. He single-handedly, without advisors, refused to provide the Portfolio Committee on Public Enterprises with the short list of bidders and the sale and purchase agreement signed with Dagatsu so we could see all the details of how this process went about. Now, Godan initially said he would provide these documents, but later said it was impossible to do so, citing confidentiality agreements with Dagatsu. Now, members of parliament labeled Godan as arrogant and uncooperative for not handing over the documents. Yeah, now, parliament's portfolio committee on public enterprises accuses Minister Prophet Gordon of taking his team, uh, or rather taking his time to uh, provide evidence uh, on alleged irregularities at uh, the airline. Committee earlier resolved to take legal action against the public enterprises minister and he found guilty Godan faces imprisonment or a fine. News of Africa's uh, Yazid Kalmadin reports. Public Enterprises Minister Pravin Gordon has not yet been cleared of allegations that he sold undervalued South African airway shares to a company he preferred. Gordon has previously defended the 51% stake sale of the national airline to Takatso Consortium for only 51 rand. This deal has not been finalized though, as the South Africa's Auditor General says Gordon's department did not follow the correct process. The matter is being investigated by Parliament's Oversight Committee on Public Enterprises. Gordon made a presentation on various allegations before the committee on the 12th of September, but is yet to provide evidence on the SAA deal with Takatso Consortium. Now this could be part of the conspiracy that we keep hearing about that some in government, including Pravin, want to collapse state entities so they could privatize them and sell them. Now since Pravin, was put as Minister of Public Enterprise, State Entities Performances is at its worst from ESCOM, Transnet, SAA, DINEL and a whole lot more. Now some in the EFF have said in the past that Pravin will be the downfall of Serial Ramaphosa's presidency. You see Pravin was Finance Minister before he was abruptly fired by former President Jacob Zuma in March 2017 and is now the Minister of State Owned Enterprises. You see, he was seen as the one person against corruption in Zuma's government and was one of the few ministers in Zuma's cabinet that was strongly defended by the EFF. But that has all changed now. Now, when it comes to SAA, Gordon has been ducking and diving the portfolio committee for more than 12 months with the documents. Now, why is he not complying? Why is a deal of a public company made private? Now, Bantu Holomisa said, Dakato is a company that was formed by the ruling party to continue milking state resources under a different name. You see, the ANC has been getting weaker every election. It's quite obvious that in the not so distant future, they will be out of power politically. So they're making sure that they privatize all the cash cows before they are out. So they could still have power through ownership of these important companies in the country. Now, once that is done, it's not going to matter whether they are in the ruling party or not. They will still be in control of some parts of the economy. Now, that's how the Russian oligarchs got rich and powerful. And that's how some beneficiaries of apartheid stayed rich. They gave up political power for control in some parts of the economy. Khatato <laughs> Tlakudi who was the Director General of Public Enterprises, reported the SAA issue to the President, Ramaphosa, not knowing that it's going to backfire and eventually would get him suspended. Now, Takudi ended up blowing the whole SAA and Dakato deal to the media. And one of the things he alluded to was that the sale of SAA has become a template of how all the SOEs will be sold off to the political elite. So, yes. when was the due diligence done uh, on the Takatsu Consortium? Yeah, because in terms of these kind of transactions, once then you appoint a transaction advisor, then you undertake the due diligence. So, after 
uh, the, the, the recommendations were approved within government, then a due diligence was done. And there is that due diligence, like, you know, uh, we've got a paper of the due diligence. When was it done, done, Advocate Makobe? When was uh, it done? So, so done. Uh, the due diligence was done in November 2021. Uh, when was the uh, announcement made? When were uh, the Takatsu Consortium actually uh, appointed as the preferred bidder and private equity partner for SAA? The agreement which regulates uh, this was signed in February 2022. Because remember, uh, the agreement comes into being once this... Uh, no, but Advocate, SBA, I'm, I'm asking, pay, when, pay, was, pay pay, when was the uh, announcement made? Agreement. When was the announcement made that Takatsu was actually the preferred um, a bidder for the equity partner for SAA? When was that announcement made? It was in June 2021 when the MOU was signed and the minister then announced that Takatsu will be the preferred strategic equity partner. So but you, you made the announcement this, in this. June. Let, let me just premise this for you, yeah. um, uh, Advocate Marco. Okay. So you make yes. the announcement in June and then you embark on a due diligence process in November. Am I understanding you correctly? Yes, but let me explain But how this, does like, that you know, work? But as part of the evaluation process by the technical committee, there is also an internal due diligence because you can't appoint without that process uh, being done internally. No, but so I put it to you, Advocate Makobe. You did not do the due diligence because even right now, let me ask you, how much has Takatsu invested in SAA right now to date? No, they've not invested anything Why not? in SAA. Why and, not? And let me explain to you. Now, Takatsu Holdings, the company that owns 51% of SAA, is also owned by a company called Herod. You see, Herod does have political ties with people like Popo Molefe, who was the Premier of Northwest under Mandela's cabinet, and also Jabum Legate, who was Deputy Minister of Finance under Tabumbegi's government. Now, these people are connected to Herod. Now, some say Herod might be playing the same role as Busasa did in the first state capture by fueling out money from the state's purse back to Lutuli House or the ANC. But this is just a conspiracy. You see, the collapse of most of these state entities started during Zuma's presidency. Now, with Cyril's run, we can see the plan in action. You see, Cyril is doing what Zuma wanted to do with the Guptas, but Cyril is doing it without Zuma. You see, their politics is a fight for state resources. Now, what I would like to know is that, are these state entities going to survive with the ruling party still in charge? Will there ever be a time where we find actual qualified people running state entities, people with experience in those particular fields? I'm asking this because these people are questionable. You see, they took Dudumien and made her a chairperson of an airline. I mean, she was a primary school teacher. And then they previously appointed Daniel Mancha, an attorney who was struck off his role because he was a shady lawyer. And they put that person as a chairperson of Dinell. <laughs> you see, these guys, they will fire competent staff and all those who resist so they could make way for the clowns. You see, if people like Pravin are not standing up against corruption, hey, I don't know if there's hope for our government, man. Let me know in the comment section. Do you think Jamnanda's Pravin Gordon is presiding over state capture 2.0 as it has been alluded by some people in our government? Oh, this is just a conspiracy against Pravin. Yo, you let me know in the comments, man. I'd like to hear from you. Yeah, man. That's all I got for you on this episode. If you enjoyed the episode, please give us a like. And if you enjoyed the content that we do, please subscribe to the page. Otherwise, thank you for watching and peace to everybody.